Okay. Good morning, everybody. So this is my pleasure to. Okay. <laughs> to introduce so Olivier Guichard from the University of Strasbourg for his first lecture uh, on the Anos of Representations basics and maybe more. Oh, today for the basics, I think. <laughs> Well, thank you, thank you for the introduction and uh, also for the opportunity to give this series of lecture. Um, so th this first uh, lecture, we, I, I will give definition of another representation, one definition and uh, a lot of examples. So, uh, so it, it's a kind of theorem that we serve as a definition. Uh, uh, today, and uh, I mean, there will be two definitions of another representation is statement, and the fact that they are, that they are equivalent is a result of Kapovich, uh, Leib, and uh, Porti. I'm, I'm restricting to uh, a specifically uh, finitely generated subgroup of uh, orthogonal groups. So OPQ is the orthogonal group of the form with a P a positive sign and Q a negative sign. So S is finite. And I suppose that uh, 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 there exists number k uh, positive such that for every uh, gamma in gamma, the difference between the first, the two first singular value of gamma is controlled by uh, the length of gamma as a word in it. This is my definition. I will give uh, precisely all the, uh, uh, the definition. Um, it is the hypothesis. I will give uh, the precise definition of all this uh, in a moment. And then uh, uh, the following hold. The first is as a group gamma is a, a Gromov hyperbolic or word hyperbolic for the length metric. And as such, it has a visual boundary or Gromov boundary. And uh, there exists a map from the Gromov boundary to uh, the projective space. So here of dimension uh, e plus q minus 1, that is uh, continuous and uh, Equivalent with respect to the action of uh, gamma. This map satisfies a, a kind of transversality properties. So the, it states that for every two point in the Gromov boundary that are uh, distinct, not only the two lines are distinct, but they are in transverse position. The two lines, beta of eta and beta of eta prime, are uh, transverse. And uh, the fourth condition, I will try to make it fit here, is a precise uh, dynamical uh, behavior uh, for the action of gamma on the project. So, uh, so there are uh, uh, constants, uh, I call it K and A, but uh, just, and uh, uh, so that the following hold for every geodesics. in uh, the group gamma, as I equipped with uh, the world lens. 
And uh, for my statement to work, I need that the, the geodesic start at the uh, neutral element of the, the group gamma. And uh, uh, I have the following estimate. The, uh, the tangent action of gamma n at the point beta of eta, its uh, norm is uh, controlled by uh, the length of gamma n uh, with this exponential uh, decay. Okay, and uh, what is eta? Eta is the limit of uh, gamma n inside. Uh, okay, and this uh, force, this fourth statement, I will uh, say that uh, gamma is another. Okay, so now I would like to uh, uh, maybe give uh, uh, <laughs> so this is part of my plan to give explanation of the term of, uh, of uh, the statement. So for definiteness, I, 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 uh, I take OPQ to be uh, the G GLP plus Q that are orthogonal for the uh, standard uh, quadratic form, which is a diagonal with uh, one and minus one. So one subscript P and one subscript Q is uh, the identity matrix with uh, uh, P uh, and Q uh, diagonal term. Okay. So I need to uh, give some detail on the carton decomposition. So it works in OPQ, but not generally for every G in GIP plus Q. And there exist uh, two orthogonal matrices. for the definite uh, orthogonal form, and there exists a sequence of uh, non-decreasing sequence of P plus Q number, such that uh, uh, G is a product of K, the diagonal matrix with uh, Uh, the term uh, e to the mu i uh, as a coefficient and k prime. And if you have another decomposition of G uh, with uh, as a product of orthogonal matrix, exponential of diagonal matrix with a, a non increasing coefficient and an orthogonal matrix, then the, the two diagonal um, uh, uh, matrix uh, coincide, and the pair k k prime uh, is uh, uh, determined only um, up to a matrix that is orthogonal and can commute with this. So there is a uniqueness statement uh, that I don't stand, but uh, uh, mu i is mu i of g is uniquely. Uh, determined. So one way uh, of seeing this for mu one is that e to the mu one is the operator norm of g acting on R p plus q, and you have similar formula for e to the mu one plus mu two, etc. X subscript s, yes, yes. S subscript S is the one metric on gamma uh, with respect to the uh, generators S.
k, k prime are in OP plus q, yes? Yes, but the Cartan decomposition, I already wrote it for g, l, p plus q. Okay. Then for element of OP, q, in fact, this matrices k, k prime belong to the intersection of OP plus q and OP, q. If we uh, uh, work in a way that this diagonal cell group intersect maximally uh, OP. Okay, but I don't want to, I just, this is addressing No, 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 no. It will be OP cross OQ, the intersection. Good. Okay. And uh, uh, um, uh, <clears throat> so this this mu i I defined it this way, but uh, the difference mu one minus mu two uh, can uh, help uh, to understand uh, the dynamical behavior of G and its contraction property uh, on the um, projective space. So mu mu one minus mu two. Uh, controls, uh, I mean, the contraction of G on uh, the projective space. And how do, and I make this uh, precise. Uh, it's the opposite of mu1 minus mu2 of G. I think this formula is correct, but uh, I'm not. It is a logarithm of the infimum over x in the projective space of uh, the operator norm of the derivative of g at x. Okay, so this is uh, the operator norm, so the derivative of g at x goes to the tangent space at uh, r, the projective space at x, to the tangent space at g of x, to uh, uh, the projective space. Okay, so G uh, uh, is seen now as a projective transformation and acting on the projective space and this uh, tangent action. <clears throat> so to calculate an operator norm, I need to put uh, 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 norms on these vector spaces. And uh, uh, one way of doing this is that uh, you put uh, norms uh, coming uh, from uh, O P plus Q uh, invariant Riemannian metric. Okay. Excuse me. This infimum? Yes. Because they are smaller than mu2. This is a bit. Uh, so, uh, uh, no, I think this formula is correct, but uh, uh, I, I never check it completely. Uh, what is uh, true is that. Uh, if you take x to be the first basis vector, then uh, the log of uh, this uh, uh, operator norm is exactly uh, uh, this. And I really believe this. Okay, and uh, 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 this remark uh, asked me to uh, uh, give meaning of this last statement. So uh, this is the operator norm of the tangential action of gamma n acting at the point uh, beta n. Okay. 
so uh, 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 property uh, for uh, gives uh, so uh, a kind of uh, uh, of uh, you know the control on where uh, uh, this infimum is coarsely achieved. Uh, so I, I look at the action of gamma n on the gamma n at the point beta of eta, and eta is the endpoint of the geodesic uh, gamma n. Okay, and uh, maybe one last thing that I mean. What does that mean? Uh, <laughs> for egg and a prime in R uh, P plus Q minus one to be transverse. So it didn't, generally doesn't make any sense to, to uh, 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 for a line product space, but here uh, I will uh, 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 take benefit from the fact that there, there is a, new, uh, a quadratic form involved. So the condition is the following. That you take the orthogonal of uh, the first one for the form of signature PQ that uh, was used. And uh, uh, so this uh, hyperplane uh, intersect trivially, trivially uh, the, the first thing. So I will try to give more and more uh, properties of uh, um, uh, another uh, subgroup in the talk, but I really like to, uh, so is it a countdown? Oh, yes, nice. <laughs> Uh, to give uh, examples of uh, of uh, such groups, so the example one is uh, uh, for general PQ, but for the most simple gamma, uh, meaning that gamma is Z and generated by one element G. Okay. And in this condition, uh, gamma is another if and only if G is side uh, proximal. And I don't expect you to know what is a proximal element, so I will give a definition. And uh, an element G in the general uh, linear group uh, is proximal. If uh, there exists L, a line H hyperplane that are uh, G invariant, Uh, okay, uh, they are uh, transverse. And the eigenvalue of G on L is bigger than any of, uh, any moduli of eigenvalues of G in H. So, uh, and I write that G restrict to L is the multiplication by T. So 
it's the identity of L, and the modulus of T is bigger than uh, uh, modulus of uh, every uh, eigenvalue in C of uh, G restricted to H. So it means that you look at the uh, maximal modulus of eigenvalue, and this happened with multiplicity one. And since this happened with multiplicity one, the eigenvalue need to be uh, real. Okay. So uh, uh, what do you need to know to, to check this equivalence? Uh, 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 you need to know a number of things. So for for uh, G in uh, uh, GIP plus Q, I will denote by uh, lambda one of G bigger than lambda P plus Q of G, uh, the logarithm of the eigenvalue of G. Complex. Moduli. So it's a notation that uh, we need, and uh, maybe a, a small lemma uh, is uh, to have different characterization of uh, a proximal element. So an element is proximal in uh, this sense, if and only if the difference between the two first uh, uh, lambda i is uh, positive, and another characterization that may be useful is also to say that uh, uh, the action of G on the projective space so as an attracting fixed point. And those equivalents are, are not really uh, uh, difficult to, to show. I mean, you just put a G in a, uh, its a gender normal form and calculate uh, that uh, uh, using this. And uh, um, uh, one thing that is useful to prove this equivalent is to have a relation between uh, the lambda and the mu, and the relation is uh, the following. So, uh, uh, so uh, relation between uh, lambda and mu is that the ice. Uh, uh, Logarithm of uh, of um, complex eigenvalue is a limit of uh, the ice uh, singular value of G to the K divided by uh, K. Okay. So if you have this and the estimate in the theorem, it's pretty obvious that you get that uh, lambda 1 minus lambda 2 is uh, positive, and you have to, to show that the uh, converse statement. But, um, uh, I don't think this is OK. And maybe a, a remark that is specific now to element in OPQ. 
and uh, 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 the equivalence here uh, stated like this is it really works only in uh, OPQ is that uh, if you assume that G is proximal, then its inverse is also proximal. And uh, I mean, there is a number of ways to, to see this. The, the first way is that G inverse is, in fact, conjugated to the transpose of G. So if G is proximal, the transpose of G is proximal also, and you have this statement. And you also have uh, that, uh, uh, for element, if OPQ, uh, this series of numbers is uh, symmetric with respect to uh, switching. Uh, so the lambda p plus q is minus lambda one, lambda p plus q minus one is minus lambda two, etc. Good. So let's try to, to go to example uh, two. And I say that uh, a co-compact lattice in O to one is another. So for O to one, you can uh, note that uh, U two of G is always zero. Because that, uh, can the diagonal matrix uh, belongs to O to one, we need to have uh, this symmetry and mu three of G is the opposite of mu one of G. So I have to, uh, say that for element of gamma, uh, mu one of G, which is equal to mu one minus mu two, is bonded from above, from below, uh, uh, by the length uh, world of gamma, okay? But uh, uh, what we know is that uh, orbital map from gamma to uh, H2, so if I take the orbit of uh, I, uh, is a quasi asymmetry. So in particular, the world length of gamma is coarsely controlled by the distance between I and gamma of I. Okay. So uh, it means that uh, uh, there exists uh, a positive constant such that uh, the world length of gamma is uh, bonded from uh, above by the distance in H2 between I and gamma of I. Okay. This is for every gamma. But uh, for every G in O to one, if I did the, uh, the calculation correctly, the distance between I and G of I is, uh, uh, it is coarsely uh, mu one of G. So I believe the uh, correct answer is one fourth of uh, mu one of G, but uh, this can, and uh, the different normalization. Okay. So you can generalize this easily to uh, 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 co-compact lattices <coughs> in uh, uh, OP plus one. So if you take a co-compact lattice, in uh, OP1, sorry, uh, then uh, only mu1 is non-zero and mu p plus one is the opposite of mu1. And uh, using the fact that you have a quasi-isometry, you have a, a control of the length uh, metric with respect to distance in uh, HP, 
and you have the same formula uh, if you choose correctly the base point in uh, H plus. Okay. So those are another uh, subgroup or representations. Uh, uh, so uh, my example is three. Maybe I will uh, move. Uh, maybe I keep this, this, this theorem. I will be back to uh, O to one, and note that uh, 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 if gamma in O to one is another, uh, then uh, gamma contains uh, no uh, parabolic isometry. But this comes from example one. So example one uh, says that uh, 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 every uh, uh, non-trivial element in gamma should be uh, proximal, but uh, uh, for G in O to one, uh, if you are proximal, is equivalent to be uh, hyperbolic isometry. Okay, and maybe it's uh, 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 it was to note that uh, another subgroups are, are already discrete. Uh, so it's, it's easy for a group in O21 or O uh, uh, P1 because uh, mu2 is zero and uh, you have a finite number of elements with uh, mu1 uh, bonded by a certain constant and this means that the, the group is discrete. So, uh, uh, so uh, remark if gamma in OPQ is another then uh, gamma is discrete, and you check uh, uh, this is because uh, for every M in R, the set of element of gamma with mu one of gamma bonded by M is uh, finite. So this finiteness follows easily from this uh, 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 minoration because this mu two you can just for, for, uh, forget it and that and just deduce that mu one is bonded from uh, below by uh, the length uh, <coughs> the length metric and. Uh, uh, to, to understand that the group is discrete, if and if this uh, uh, hypothesis uh, happen, you have to, uh, I mean, look a little at what does it mean uh, on the carton decomposition. You have these two compact parts that you can forget, and you have to give bond on the uh, coefficient of the diagonal matrix. And here I can give only a bond for uh, the first coefficient because the last coefficient is the opposite of the first coefficient. So if I give a bond on this mu one, I have a, a lower bond on mu uh, p plus q for uh, element in OPQ, and this gives a compact uh, uh, things in. Uh, okay. And uh, uh, conversely to this uh, statement, if I have a group finitely generated discrete group in uh, uh, O to one, then it is another. So the, the proposition, 
and I will try to prove it. If you have a, a subgroup gamma of O to one, that is uh, uh, finitely generated, uh, discrete, and uh, without parabolic. then uh, it is another. So what I would like to, to uh, do is uh, to be able to uh, do the same proof that I did in example two. And we need uh, some kind of co-compactness uh, somewhere. And in fact, those are uh, complex co compact So the, the, uh, uh, the surface, the Gaussian surface, strictly speaking, it's orbit surface by because it can have some uh, 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 finite subarizer. So uh, gamma mod H2 has uh, no cusp. Okay, so this is the hypothesis that uh, the group gamma has no parabolics. Uh, the quotient surface doesn't have any cups, is that it has only funnels. And this means that uh, uh, there exists M in gamma mod H2, uh, uh, compact uh, with uh, Geodesic boundary. And uh, uh, the complement of M is a finite union. Of uh, things that bonds the geodesic. And, uh, and expand exponentially. Okay. So the, the uh, structures of uh, uh, surfaces, hyperbolic surfaces, and then we to, to do this. Okay. And the important uh, thing here is that M is compact. So now I take C inside H2, uh, the lift of M. <coughs> and C uh, is invariant by the group gamma. Because it comes from something that is in the quotient. And uh, uh, the action of gamma on C is uh, properly discontinuous. And uh, with a compact quotient. Okay, so now it means that the orbital application from gamma to C. So I take any point x0 in C and look at this orbital application. Uh, this is a quasi isometry. And this will mean that the length uh, metric will be controlled by the distance in C, which is the distance into H2 between X0 and uh, gamma of X0. And it doesn't relate directly to uh, mu2 or mu1, but uh, I can just introduce uh, my uh, preferred base point I. To 
obtain that uh, it is uh, uh, controlled by mu1 of gamma plus uh, twice the distance in H2 between X0 and I. Okay. So since gamma is a, uh, uh, an isometry, this distance between this two image of gamma is the distance between I and X0. Okay, and this is as good as the previous inequality to, to show that uh, mu1 uh, goes to, uh, is, is uh, controlled by uh, the ransom rate. Good. Okay, so now I will uh, uh, explain how uh, this general, uh, this example it generalizes to uh, OP1, but I will do the opposite. I will uh, suppose that I have a convex or convex subgroup first and, and say why it is another. So I take uh, subgroup gamma in OP1. And I uh, suppose that there exists uh, C in uh, HP, the uh, hyperbolic space, so which is OP1 or uh, OP cross O1, which is also the set of X in Rp plus 1, such that uh, x1 square plus, plus xp square minus xp plus 1 square equals minus 1, and xp plus 1 is positive. So uh, one sheet of this uh, double sheeted uh, uh, hyperboloid, or uh, so maybe I'll just put <laughs> equivalent. And you can also identify this with uh, the space of line in the projective space so that uh, the line generated by one element x which has a norm a negative with respect to uh, uh, the quadratic form of uh, signature p1. So in particular, using this uh, last model, you can see that uh, you can embed here uh, in uh, the affine chart where xp plus one equals one. Yeah. And in this affine chart, it is the ball center at zero and of radius one. So this. Uh, identified with a vector space, RP. Okay, and uh, for me it's useful, this identification, because it enables me uh, to say uh, that uh, C is uh, a convex. I will mean that in this affine chart, uh, C is convex. So I suppose that there is C that is a closed, a convex. I use this uh, convexity property in the this affine chart or the convexity notion uh, that it is uh, invariant by gamma. Okay. And that the action of gamma on C is uh, properly discontinuous and co compact. It is a situation we have we had uh, there for p equals two, and uh, 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 we show that uh, group that satisfies this property in fact have uh, such a C. Okay. 
Uh, so you say, we say that gamma is uh, convex co-compact. If uh, uh, this happens, and maybe in the talk of Francois, there will be convex co-compact subgroup in, uh, in a, uh, a different setting. Okay? But that pre-generalizes uh, this. And uh, uh, this implies that gamma is another. <coughs> so, um, uh, maybe just, I mean, the proof is the same, but maybe just one comment. You, I don't have to make the a priori assumption that gamma is finitely generated. It will be a, a corollary of uh, 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 this uh, property that it has a co compact action on, on a convex sets. Good. Uh, and uh, maybe one good thing to know is that uh, uh, the converse also holds. Okay? So if gamma in OP1 is an of then uh, gamma is convex or compact. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe it's time to uh, uh, make a, a general remark for uh, um, uh, uh, the map beta that appears uh, in the definition that will appear in, in the proof that the map uh, beta from the boundary infinity of gamma into uh, the projected space uh, takes uh, a value in uh, the space of isotropic line. this. Okay, so maybe I will explain this uh, more carefully uh, later, but it is not really difficult to show that if you have a, a fixed point uh, uh, of uh, a proximal element, so the egg of a proximal element is always uh, an attracting uh, uh, so it's not proving that this, but I will say it proves that if G in OPQ is a proximal, so uh, I have L and H as before, <coughs> then L is isotropic. And why it is so? Because egg is generated by one element x. G of x is t to time x with uh, t uh, bigger than one. And uh, 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 the norm Uh, <coughs> so 
I want to prove that uh, this norm for the uh, form of signature PQ is zero, but the norm of X equals the norm of G of X. Okay, so this is because G is an isometry for this uh, thing. So why I denote G X bracket subscript one is the first coefficient of uh, this uh, vector, etc. And this is this multiple of X. So this is in fact T squared time X one squared plus X two squared, etc. up to X three plus two squared. So as soon as T squared is different from one, you get uh, that uh, this norm has to be zero. So it doesn't explain directly uh, uh, this uh, fact, but uh, it is related to it, and I will come to that too. Okay. So I, I will just give the construction of uh, 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 in the setting of this proposition of a context in the projected space. Uh, uh, that is invariant by the action of gamma. And I will not uh, completely prove uh, that it is, uh, that the action is uh, compact, compact on this convex. Okay, so I will start the proof of this proposition. Okay. And first I look at the closure of the projective uh, uh, of the hyperbolic space in the projective space. Okay. And this is the union of the hyperbolic space itself with something that can be called the ideal boundary of uh, uh, HP. But concretely, uh, here, HP was. Uh, uh, the line, uh, the isotropic line, and this, its boundary will be the, the null line. Okay, and the boundary of HP, <coughs> sorry, are the line in uh, uh, the project space that are uh, isotropic. So in the chart uh, RP, I see I can just draw one ball. So it's inside is a, a, a hyperbolic uh, space, and the boundary of the ball, which is a sphere of dimension uh, p minus one is uh, 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 this is space of isotropic lines. Maybe I should close the curly bracket. In, in the affine chart. Affine uh, chart, xp plus one equals one. So in this affine chart, uh, this condition will translate that uh, this x1 plus xp squared is less than 1. And the, the, the boundary is exactly the, the sphere of. Uh, for, okay. so, uh, so in this affine chart, it is, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe it's called the Klein model of uh, the Poincare model. Okay, so now I have my map beta from the Anosov uh, uh, definition that goes inside the space of the tropic kind, which is a boundary. So its image is contained in this sphere, and I will just take uh, uh, C to be uh, the convex L. of the image of beta. Okay. 
that I intersect with uh, HP. Okay, so this convex hull is a closed subset of this uh, closed ball, and uh, I intersect it with uh, this uh, uh, the, uh, the hyperbolic uh, space. So this is a closed subset. It is a convex and closed in a HP. And uh, okay, what what do I want to say? I want not to say that the action of gamma on C is uh, properly discontinuous and co-compact. So uh, the fact that gamma by C is gamma invariant, of course. Because this, this subset of uh, the sphere at infinity is gamma invariant, so its convex hull is uh, equally uh, gamma invariant. The fact that gamma is discrete implies that the action of gamma on C is properly discontinuous. Uh, uh, I will have an way uh, explanation on the, the, the co-compactness. Uh, okay, so uh, it's a kind of sketch of uh, co-compactness. Okay, the, the first thing to, to note is that uh, every x in C uh, is in uh, the convex L of uh, e plus one point in uh, this set beta of. Uh, <coughs> Sorry, of uh, the boundary. Okay, and this is Carrateur-Dirichlet theorem, so very classical uh, convex geometry. But uh, as this, uh, this, uh, uh, so uh, what is this saying? Uh, rephrasing is this says that uh, x belongs uh, to an ideal uh, simplex. With vertices in beta of beta of gamma. Okay. And a fact of uh, hyperbolic geometry is that uh, these uh, simplices are universally thin. Okay? So it means that uh, uh, X is. Uh, oh, are closed, so at, at distant at most R, where R is uh, a constant that depends only on uh, the geometry of HP. Uh, so this is an implication from uh, one side of uh, the simplex. Maybe it's better to call this uh, an edge. Okay. So the uh, the situation is, uh, is as follows: I can restrict um, my intention to a subset of C, which is a union of geodesics between uh, two points in the field. So I have uh, x is are closed, or maybe it, uh, C is uh, in the R neighborhood of E, which is uh, 
which is a union of uh, geodesics uh, between uh, points in uh, And I claim, and I will not uh, prove it, that uh, uh, the action of gamma on E is co-compact. So, in fact, all this uh, statement, I am eating it uh, here, but. Uh, uh, well, let's uh, uh, let's content of this uh, uh, this proof, and uh, uh, I will now uh, give two uh, uh, more examples uh, on of another group, and I will uh, quit a little the the world of uh, of uh, orthogonal groups. Before doing this, I will. We, uh, uh, I want to make some remark on the on the limit set. So, um, which is an important notion for discrete group, and I have now an ad hoc uh, definition of limit set that is why switching to uh, 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 another third group, but uh, it is, uh, uh, in fact, uh, a quite subtle uh, object. So I, I restrict the group in OPQ and I, I will denote by lambda subscript gamma uh, the closure of the following set. So I take the set of line in the projective space such that L is uh, the attracting fixed point Uh, some gamma in gamma. Okay. Of some proximal element gamma. Okay, so this is a, a gamma invariant subset of this uh, protective uh, space, and I uh, promote it to a closed uh, invariant set. Uh, so the, the uh, remark I, I uh, did before uh, 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 says that uh, this subset, this set is contained in the set of isotropic lines, so its closure is also contained in the set of isotropic lines. It's contained in, uh, okay, I did not hit in the boundary of HP plus one, which is in fact of isotropic kinds. Okay. And uh, uh, this limit set is equal to the uh, image of, uh, of, uh, of the map beta and this, in fact, Proves this uh, remark that I did before. Okay, so it's uh, a proposition. Uh, if gamma is an of the limit set lambda gamma is equal to the uh, uh, image of beta. Okay, and, uh, how do, you, how do we do this? 
if gamma is proximal. Okay. Uh, then uh, the image of the attracting fixed point of gamma in uh, uh, the boundary of the group at infinity is the attracting line of gamma. So this is uh, the attracting uh, fixed point in the boundary at infinity of gamma for this one and in uh, Uh, RP um, <coughs> to project his space for this one. Okay. And you, you prove this uh, by looking at this uh, uh, property four for the geodesic or quasi geodesic uh, that is gamma to the n. So uh, it says that uh, this quasi geodesic converges to uh, this point eta plus of gamma. And uh, you know that the construction of gamma to the n at this point is uh, bigger and bigger, and it will precisely mean that uh, this point is uh, invariant, and that the uh, 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 the contraction at this point is less uh, 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 than one. Okay, and this property I would really like to uh, save it. For later, so we call it property five, and uh, and we say that uh, gamma is a uh, dynamics uh, preserving. So, uh, okay, so uh, one side of this remark, it's, it's easy to, to deduce uh, this. So I did use that uh, um, uh, uh, lambda of gamma is contained in beta of these uh, things because uh, uh, This subset is uh, closed, and contains L gamma, uh, or gamma in gamma, proximal. And also, uh, since the eta gamma plus in uh, the boundary of a group are dense. You deduce from this that uh, uh, the image of this set is contained in this closed subset. Okay. Because it is a case for uh, this uh, dense subset, and then you just uh, have this spec continuity. Good. So I, I will not give another definition or equivalent definition of. Uh, Another for presentation, but I will just introduce a notation. If I have a, a function f from gamma to r, so I will write that uh, the limit of f of gamma when gamma goes to infinity is plus infinity if uh, for every number r and m in r. Uh, the set of gamma such that f of gamma is less that m is uh, finite. So this is what you expect uh, 
uh, for the discrete topology of gamma. Okay, and uh, so I will say get this as a theorem. My uh, co author here, so this is with uh, Francois Guerrito, uh, Annie Cassel, and Anna Vinar. So, if, if I have a group in OPQ that uh, satisfies one, two, and three. So the group is what hyperbolic. I have a boundary map. So this is two and three. Uh, the boundary map has a transversality property. I want that the boundary map is a, a dynamic preserving. So this is my property five. And I want a six that uh, the limit of mu one minus mu two of gamma is press infinity as gamma goes to infinity. Okay. And uh, 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 so it's a much weaker uh, assumption that this uh, uh, very precise control that uh, uh, was used in, in the theorem. And uh, uh, in this situation, uh, gamma is another. And more precisely, uh, uh, beta is uh, the boundary map. So, of the uh, representation of the group comes with a, a map from the boundary of the group to the space, uh, the project space. And, <coughs> and there was no mistake here. The, 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 Map we have is a good. So maybe one more example before I stop. And uh, uh, it will be for a subgroup of SA3. That's my example uh, five. I have a gamma subgroup of SA3. And I suppose. Exist omega in uh, the projective space that is uh, open, that is uh, bonded in some affine chart. Okay. So in this affine chart, it is convex. And it is a gamma invariant. And I also make the hypothesis that the gamma, the action of gamma of C is a properly discontinuous and co convex. I have the, the following theorem. Uh, uh, yes, sorry. Thank you. So this one is good. So, uh, so maybe this result is due to Ben's increase in the uh, uh, equation of the plane, but I can attribute it to Sophie to Yves Benoit. But, uh, the group gamma is world hyperbolic. If and only if uh, gamma is uh, strictly convex. Which 
countries are also equivalent to the fact that gamma has a C1 boundary. And what does it mean to be strictly complex in this situation? So it means there is no uh, segment uh, contained in uh, the modern area. And the proposition is, uh, that we exist to uh, another flow group is that, uh, in this case, so two of gamma is another subgroup where two is a map for SX3. So this is one drawback of uh, the approach I, I did uh, today is that uh, I just have uh, another subgroup of uh, orthogonal groups. So I have to uh, go through an orthogonal group. So I have an action of SS3 on three by three matrices and the equivalent uh, uh, form, quadratic form, is a trace. Uh, Yes, so I will stop here. I will uh, uh, give uh, uh, tomorrow a more uh, concrete way to uh, phrase that two of gamma is another directly uh, uh, in SS3 and not going uh, through another representation. And uh, uh, I guess we need to stop uh, here. Thank you. Okay, are there some questions? Okay. So we will have a break until 11.45 and then the lecture by um, Francois, right? Is it? Yes, I think I'm, I'm okay, 11.45. Thank you very much. <laughs>